Hi guys and welcome to another iOS development tutorial. In this tutorial we're going to take a look at how you can customize your table views. So in this, this is probably going to be one of many tutorials in a series. And in this specific tutorial what we're going to look at is how you can change the height of a row in a table view. So you can see that I've got a pretty simple table view based application running on the sim in the simulator on my screen. And you'll notice of course that it's just got three simple rows with the standard table view look and feel. What we're going to do is change the height of these rows so you can kind of see how there's enough space for you to add things like images, detailed text, and things like that. Um, what I won't be covering in this tutorial, of course, is how you can create a table view. I've actually got, I think, a pretty decent tutorial on that process on uh, my channel. So just take a look at the other videos in the series and you'll definitely find one called how to create a simple table view. There's also probably several others on YouTube that you can take a look at. But if you want one that I think works pretty well and kind of follows what we're going to be doing here, uh, take a look at mine um, and we'll go from there. All right, so if you haven't done table views before, be sure to take a look at that. If you have, I'm just going to give you a quick run through of everything that's in place so you can see that it's pretty standard stuff. If I click on my view controller's NIP file, you'll notice that I've got a UI table view object that's just sitting on my view, nothing special there. If I go to the view controller's header file, you'll notice that I have explicitly indicated that I will act, uh, that my class will act as the tab UI table view data source and delegate. This is of course standard stuff. I've got an NS array, which is just a list of NS string objects that we use to um, add text to our table view. If I jump over to my implementation file, you'll notice that Again, I've got my array. I'm initializing with these NS string objects. And then, you know, I've got the standard table view data source methods, which is the number of rows in section, which returns the number of items in the array. And then, of course, the table view colon self row and index path method, which is what actually draws the cells. Right. Okay, so pretty standard step. So, what we're going to try and do, of course, like I said, is change the height of the row. Now, there's Turns out there's three ways you can do it. So let me show you the easiest way first. To do it the easiest way, what you want to do is jump into view, your view controller's NIP file or viewcontroller.nip. Then you select your table view, and I actually already have that selected. And then if you don't already have it uh, displayed, you want to show the utilities inspector, which is displayed by clicking on this button up top. And then within that, there is a size inspector. Now, if you've got your table view selected, you'll notice that the size inspector has a table view size component here. And one of the first options here is, called, is a property called row height. This is where we're gonna change it, its, its value. Now, if you're looking at the 44 here, that's because the default height of a row in a UI table view is in fact 44. What we're gonna do is double that and make it 88. And we'll click out of there and you notice immediately it changes the size. If I do a command S, and then a command R to run my project, you'll notice here in a second that those table view rows are now twice as tall. And now that kind of gives you an idea of how you can change this and maybe add more inter interface elements um, if you're using sort of a table view as the base. Right, so let's hit stop and stop running that application. I'm also going to go back and change this back to 44. Click out of there, do a command S to save so it goes back to what it was. Right, so now let's look at the other two options. Now when we selected this, you notice that the property here was called row height. And that is in fact the property we're going to leverage uh, when we want to change the height of the row uh, programmatically. To do that, of course, we have to have an outlet to this table view, which means we need to be able to affect it from within our code. Now if you're like me and you create table views um, using Interface Builder, you drag and drop a UI table view object, um, you probably don't create an outlet to it right off the get-go. So we, let's go ahead and do that. The way we do that, of course, is we open up the Assistant Editor, and we can hide this one here and give ourselves some room. Then we're going to select our table view, right-click it, and drag a connection over here to our view controller's header file. There we can just give it a name. I'm just going to call this My Table View. And let's see, type that correctly. Hit Connect. And, of course, that's going to add the at property and at synthesize statements for us in the view controller files, which essentially is our setter and getter methods. Right, now we can back out of here, go back to our sort of standard editor view, and I am going to jump back into my view controller's implementation file. Here's our synthesized statement, like I said. Now what I can do is I can jump down here into my view to load method, and since I have an outlet to my table view called my table view, 
I'm going to use that and use its row height property and just set it here to be 88. Do a command S to save, command R to run this project, and we'll see again we have now been programmatically able to change the height of the table views row. So there we go. So that's method two. Now let's take a look at one last method in terms of how you can do this. And the reason I'm showing you all three options is because you may want to choose one or the other depending on what you're trying to do um, in your UI. You know, if you're trying to change the height based on which row it is, uh, you may want to pick one option over the other. Right, so the last method is actually a via a method call that is part of the UI table view delegate. So to see that method call, let's just select this. I'm going to bring back my um, utilities inspector here so we can see it and if I put my cursor over the UI table view delegate I get this quick help area which is represented by this box with these wavy lines and then I have a reference here if I click this it brings up the organizer now within the organizer I can just scroll down and you'll see here we've got some tasks the first one here is configuring rows for the table view and this one's called height for row at index path this is in fact the method that we want we select it and it tells us a little bit about this particular method. It's of course going to return a float value, but what you want, what I want to bring your attention to is of course this little warning that Apple has given us. It says there are performance implications to using this particular method instead of the row height property, which is the process we looked at just a second ago. Because every time a table view, when a table view is displayed, it will call this particular method of the delegate for each of its rows. So if you've got a table view with a lot of rows, this is probably not the way you want to go. Um, in any case, we've only got a couple rows, so I'm going to go ahead and implement this particular method. I'm going to go ahead and copy the method signature, do a command C, and then come back to my implementation file, scroll down, let me make sure I've commented this out if I haven't. All right, so let's go ahead and do that. That way we're not essentially doing the same thing in two ways. And we're going to come back down here, and I'm just going to do a command V to paste, and close that, and then I will return 88.0f which is just a float value because that's what this method is supposed to return and then if I do a command R and run my project you will see that once again I've got a table view where the row height has been set to 88 so that's three different ways you can affect the row height of a uh, UI table view I hope this is helpful like I said you're gonna see this row height property changed in a quite a few different applications if you look real close. Um, one of my favorite ones is the Nike running app. If you take a look at it, they're basically using table views uh, to display some of the initial menu options and they've changed the row height property. It's probably not as big as this, but being able to change this is a major piece to developing a UI using table views. So thanks for watching. We'll continue with you in some other tutorials in the series. Thanks.